All right, everybody, and welcome back to King's Quest VI. Air today, gone tomorrow. When last we left off, we had just set sail for the land of the Green Isles, and despite our unfortunate shipwreck, we actually happened to land in the right place. We've done a little bit of exploring of the island. We've talked to some of the local peoples here, and in fact, we are on the Isle of the Crown in the land of the Green Isles. And we got an audience with, uh, well, we didn't get an audience with the princess as we would have liked, but we did get an audience with the wazir, al Hazred, who basically told us to shove off. The princess is in mourning, and she and her are to be wed. <sighs> well, it doesn't sit right with me. Something feels off. We saw her vision in the magic mirror, and she seemed like she wanted to see us. Now she's all quiet, not even going to give us the benefit of a hello when we come to, you know, talk to her? I don't know. Something seems off here. We got a very cold reception here. I'm not sure I like it. All right, well, what can we do? What can we do? I guess the best we can do now is just explore the island and, uh, I guess figure something out. We can't exactly go back home. We don't have a boat anymore, which tends to create kind of a problem for that kind of thing. Well, what's in the bookstore? We haven't been in here yet. I guess we can go look around, read a few books. Hello, I will be right up. No, oh, I'm just browsing, sir. Really, now, it's not a problem. What can I do for you? I'm really just looking. All right, so uh, let's have a look around. Alexander is standing in a cozy little shop. Books of every size and shape line the walls. A crackling fire in the fireplace completes the tranquil scene. Did you guys notice that? This guy's eye just blinked. An old man occasionally steals sidelong glances at Alexander from under a concealing hood. Maybe that's like a normal thing around here where people's eyes just glimmer. Hmm. Anyway, moving along with our lives. What's this? There's a small table near the door that bears a sign. The sign has undergone a number of changes. It once read, 10 pence. But that was crossed out and replaced with 5 pence, then 1 pence, then free. The sign currently reads, take one, please. I see. So Only we have free book books. Remains on the table. Hey, I'm it not one to turn like down. The bookshop owner really wants to get rid of that book. I see. Well, I'm not one to turn down free books here, so let's go ahead and uh, take it. Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh, yes, please take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so good, sir. Really? Thanks. Wow. People here just give you free books. This place is awesome. So, uh, how can I help you, friend? Good day, sir. The mysterious old man just ignores Alexander. Really friendly people around here. Well, uh, good bookseller. What can you tell me good about day, this sir. place? I'm a stranger in this land. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Who are you, and what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I'm on the Isle of the Crown, but I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island, and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. Indeed. This island is called the Isle of the Crown, because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village, and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> <laughs> this is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. Indeed. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? 
Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful, naturally. Indeed. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at the castle. Thank you kindly, merchant for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. Indeed, indeed. Can't argue with that. Well, he made some pretty tall uh, claims about this place. I guess we need to talk to the ferryman and see if we can learn some more about this, uh, this land we're stuck in for the time being. Apparently there's, uh, the ferryman's not operating anymore right now. Though with the way the water is, I don't blame him. Hell. It's pretty dangerous sailing around here. So, any books of interest around here? A collection of children's books fill those shelves. I don't need no children's books. Are you reading about no Humpty Dumpty? These shelves hold a selection of cookbooks. Hmm. Cat cookies. Assorted travelogues and biographies are arranged on these shelves. I see, I see. These shelves hold a collection of oddly titled guidebooks. Alexander notices such books as How to Become King with Little or No Rupees Down, Finding the Right Girl with the Right Dowry, and Why Good Princesses Like Bad Wizards. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we don't need to read any of that. What's uh, this section over here? Volumes of poetry are on display on this bookshelf. Okay, well, uh, travel logs might come in handy. Right now, Alexander is too involved with the journey he's on to take time to read about the journeys of others. I guess no one wrote about the land of the Green Isles anywhere. That's unfortunate. What about this poetry business? Thinking of Cosima, Alexander decides to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace have won for thee anon a place within this broken breast. Not bad. And another. Upon the shore the lilies bend, untouched by worldly care, where shadow they her earthly bed, oh, that she were not there. Yikes. And another. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless thing has captured me and made me powerless to flee? What thing is it without a name that brings my mind ere back the same to thee? Alexander begins to sweat. The name of love cannot apply. Its commonness does not decry the haunted, hunted, painful cry that my heart makes for you, that ere my soul eternal makes for you. Hmm. A little close to home, that one. Alexander returns the lone to the shelf. This guy is way, way, way into this girl. Like, holy shit, he is smitten with her. Looks like uh, we have <laughs> fucked up one of the books here, unfortunately. A page has fallen from the poem book and now lies on the floor. Let's hide it so no one notices and then leave the store quickly. Alexander picks up the fallen page. It's the love poem he particularly liked. It must have fallen out of the poetry book. By pure accident, I'm sure. I see that old volume has lost another page. You may keep it if you like, sir. I have glued the stubborn thing back in place two times already. I do rather like it. Thank you, merchant. Who keeps a page out of a book? Speaking of books, what you got on display here? An antique leather-bound book is displayed on a little stand on the counter. On the elaborate cover is the title, Ye Useful Book of Magic Spells. You really don't want the Ye Useless Book of Magic Spells. So, uh, you want anything for this book, sir? How much for that book on the counter, merchant? It is a fine book, is it not? 
I obtained it from the estate of the one and only magician this kingdom has ever had. Poofed himself into an aardvark in the end. Or so I heard. Second thought, you can keep it. I never found the spells all that useful myself. But then I lead a boring life. I tell you what. If you can find another rare book, something a bit more marketable, I might be willing to exchange the spell book for it. I see. Well, we'll keep that in mind, I guess, if we ever want to be a powerful wizard. Like that one guy from Gloriana. Anyway. Well, we don't really have a whole lot else to do around here. I guess we can uh, go talk to the ferryman and see if we can learn anything more about oh, the island. Lamb, shut your mouth, I'm talking! Anyways. We can see if we can learn some more about the islands. I don't know, though. Apparently there's a lot of political unrest going on between the islands. And we really know the places to come, I guess. Let's see what's through here. Ah, oh, who are you? There's a young girl in the yard. The girl is dressed in a long, plain orange robe with a thick headdress. From the appearance of her clothes and from a skittish, fearful look about her, Alexander gets the strong impression that she is a servant, or even worse, a slave. The serving girl appears to be stealing a quiet moment tending the rose bushes. Hey, what you doing? The girl is too far away to hold a conversation with Alexander. I see. Well, really, we can't really talk to her, I guess. Well, let's move on. You lazy thing! Get back to work and stay away from those roses! I've told you a million times, those flowers are too sweet for the likes of you! You've still got to do the breakfast dishes, make lunch, and clean the stables yet this morning! And get your veil back on! No one wants to look at your face! Yes, stepmother. Well, she has a portrait. I'm sure she's important. Well, that's too bad. Unfortunately, we really can't do anything for her, so let's leave. Hey, stranger! Come join me! The water is wonderful, and I can show you the way to the next island. That would be nice. Might be nice to have a little change of scenery. Who are you, man? Good day. I'm Alexander. What are you doing in the sea? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm swimming. I mean, come join me. The water's wonderful. I can show you the way to the next island. Hmm, this guy's got, come uh... On, jump in. A little water won't hurt you. Got some glimmering eyes, too, man. I don't know if I trust him. But anyway, I'm sure he's I'm sure he's good. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a new little save here. See if this is LP2. Well, we're going to save it as LP1 because I can't type worth a shit. I'm sure it's fine. Let's just jump right into the water. Considering the poor condition of the shore, it looks like the easiest way to get into the water is just to jump off the pier. All right, so where do we start? The powerful currents grab Alexander. Struggle as he might, he feels himself being pulled out to sea. Oh God, I can't swim. Why did I think this was a good idea? <laughs> not a very good swimmer, are you? I guess not. <laughs> Help me. Sorry, I think not. <laughs> hey, that's not very nice. As his head submerges for the third time, Alexander finds himself pondering the wisdom of going out on a limb for a stranger. <laughs> Dickens. Oh. Next. Alexander couldn't handle those currents. That boy must be an unbelievably strong swimmer. All right, well, let's not do that again. I actually have two LP1s now. You know, we can probably turn the volume on the music back up a little bit. Well, you know, I'm waiting because you're a dick. You got me killed last time. Yeah, you can just stay in there by yourself. Yeah, I don't That's need you. strange. The young boy in the water just disappeared. Oh well, perhaps he just dove under the water. Yeah. But he can hold his breath forever, too. What an asshole. Alright, well, let's go knock on this comically small door Alexander here. Alexander feels his... No, don't touch yourself. Alexand God damn it, Alexander. Quit touching yourself in public. Yeah, what? 
What do you want? Hey, hey, we're just here to visit. Alexander Pro. Excuse me. There we go. My name is Alexander. The owner of the bookshop in the village told me you might be able to help me. I hear you used to run this ferry for the islands. I'd like to talk to you if you have a moment. You say old Ali sent you? I can't see why. The ferry's not running, you know. I understand. I'd just like to talk to you about the islands if you don't mind. Well, I guess it'd be all right if Ali sent you. Well, don't just stand there. Come on inside. What is it you wanted to talk about, young man? Well, I'm a little bit stuck here, so, uh, I don't know. What can you tell us about the place? I'm a visitor to these islands. I'd like to learn what I can about the area. So you said outside. What is it you want to know? Well, for one thing, why has the island's only ferry been dry docked? Huh. It just ain't safe to sail these days. What with the islands feuding and all. Wazir al Hazred ordered the ferry closed till things settled down. Me? I don't think she'll ever see water again. <sighs> but why are the islands feuding? You got me. Something about stolen property or some such thing. Tis a real shame. Things used to be so friendly. Then hmm. this unrest is recent. A few years is all, but it's been long enough. Perhaps if the ferry were repaired. This old thing? This ferry's been out of water so long she's no longer even seaworthy. Her boards have dry rot. She'd fall apart at the first taste of seawater. That's too but bad. There must be some way to get off this island. There's only one other way to travel that I know of. A magic map. Oh, one of those. The owner of the pawn shop can tell you more about that than I can, Alexander. Well, that's interesting. I guess we'll have to talk to him about that. Maybe he'll uh, sell it to us for a copper. So, what else can you tell me? The chair does not respond. No, wants to talk to the damn chair. Tell me more about the ferry. I remember when I used to ferry Queen Alaria and Princess Cosima themselves. There was no thought of danger back then. They used to go visiting to care for the needy and to keep up the friendly relations between the islands. I remember their last trip. Things had started getting nasty by then, and when they came back aboard, I gathered that the queen and the princess had been received a bit coldly. Princess Cosima was such a pretty thing, and she was terribly upset. But who could be spreading these lies, she asked the queen, but the queen had no answer. Hmm. It's mighty suspicious. So property's gone missing, unrest has been spread through the islands. I don't know. What else do you know? What do you do now that the ferry no longer operates? Eh, Me? masturbate. I'm out of a job. The job my ancestors have held for generations. I'm the only one trained to avoid the reef and the rocks. But that knowledge does me no good now. Is there no other boat on the island? One that might be more seaworthy? Boats don't last long on these shoals, as you may have found out if you got here by ship. Yeah, something like that. You can that. be quite sure that this old ferry is or was the only craft on the island. It's a quaint little kingdom you got here. Tell me more about Princess Cosima. Ah, such a beautiful child. Hey now. And so pure of heart. Why, a contrary thought has never crossed her mind. Her mother was the same. The king and queen. They served the islands, not the other way around. Always thinking about the people. Ah, <sighs> they are sorely missed. Well, that's too bad. So what else you know? What else can you tell me about the land? Let's see. The Isle of Wonder's a lovely spot. A bit crazy, mind you. Gotta have a good sense of humor to enjoy a tour there. I see. What else? What else can you tell me about the land? The Isle of the Beast is pretty, but unfortunately, you can't get very far onto the island. Okay, wasn't there one more other island that we, uh, that Ali told us about? What else can you tell me about the land? The inhabitants of the Isle of the Sacred Mountain are the most gorgeous creatures you'll ever see. If you ever get to see them, that is. Alright, well, we pretty much exhausted everything he can tell us. What you got on the table here, buddy? There's a rabbit's foot on the table. It seems the ferryman is counting on a little luck. Yeah, that hasn't worked out too great for you now, has it? Well, uh, I don't know why we would possibly ever need a rabbit's foot. But you know what? We're going to ask for it anyway. I see you have a rabbit's foot. Has it brought you much luck? As you can see, my luck's been out for some time now, despite that old charm. 
Why don't you take it with you? Perhaps giving the darn thing away will bring me good fortune at last. Perhaps it will at that. Thank you. All right, we have a rabbit's foot. For some reason. Well, it's been nice coming here, taking your stuff and leaving, but uh, I gotta be going. So you have a good day. Well, I think I'll be going now. Thanks for allowing me into your home. Posh, not at all. It breaks the boredom, if you know what I mean. <sighs> okay, man. Uh, I'm get too upset now. All right, well, uh, we found out there's indeed a magical map. You know, just one of those things that are laying around, you know. Every village has one. And we were told we could talk to the pawn shop owner about it. I don't know if we have uh, anything he's going to want for it, though. We have a copper. I don't know. Anyway, uh, before we go in there, though, I want to check in with Ali's books. Because I got a feeling we should check in with Ali's books, if you know what I mean. Old lamp, shut your mouth, old man. Good day again. How may I help you? I don't know. I just had a feeling I should come here. Who are you? An odd-looking man is reading in this stuffed chair. He wears a vest, balloon-style pants, and pointed shoes. There's something deliberately silly about the man, as though he were a performer of some sort. I see. I see. Let's go and talk to him. Bother this guy while he's reading and minding his own business. Good day, sir. Is there anything you can tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I'm sorry, but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. What's wrong with your face? Hey, uh, I mean, you know, we, uh, we care about the princess too, you know. We are kind of friends of hers and, uh, well, kind of. Anyways. Excuse me again, sir. You mentioned the princess. I told you I'm not interested in talking to strangers. I'm a goddamn prince, okay? Determined to learn more about the strange man's relationship with the princess, Alexander shows the man his insignia ring and formally introduces himself. I'm sorry to insist, but my name is Alexander of Daventry, and... I appreciate the offer of the ring, Alexander, but I'm afraid I'm already spoken... What? No! No! God! No! Man! Daventry? Where have I heard of Daventry? There you go. Flying flit mice. You must be Prince Alexander. Cosima told me about you when she arrived home. How came you here? Well, there was the shipwreck By and... a ship, now wrecked upon the sand. But... You know Cosima? She truly spoke of me? Yes, yes, I... I saw her briefly when she first returned home. She mentioned a prince to me. A Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm afraid that was before she was told about her parents' death. You know, that business. You see, she arrived home a few weeks too late. The king and queen thought they'd never see her again. It is said they died of heartbreak. I'm afraid she's blamed herself. That's sad. What a terrible homecoming. If we had only known. <laughs> terrible indeed, poor thing. Everyone in the kingdom seems to despair with her these days. The streets are silent. Where is she now? The princess is sequestered in mourning. It's a rather dated tradition, and not required, but the wazir says she insisted out of respect. I see. You've yet to say who you are, and how you know the princess. I? Oh, pardon me. My name is Chalo. I am clown to the royal court, and have been since the marriage of Cosima's parents, is your neck King broken? Caliphon, and is Queen Alaria. Oh, those were the happy days. The pair of them were so full of joy and life, so in love, mm -hmm. and Cosima's birth. It would be hard to explain how long they had waited, how they had hoped for a child. I mean, she was such a charming little thing, smart as a whip, kind and sweet. Oh, she means everything to this kingdom, Alexander, and to me. I'm so terribly worried about her. About her grief over her parents, you mean? Well, the truth is, I do not trust the wazir or his plans for Kasima. I'm still living at the castle of the crown as court clown, his clown. But it is more to keep my ear to the ground than out of loyalty. I wish I knew what the princess thinks these days. <sighs> if only I could find Sing Sing, Kasima's pet nightingale. I might be able to send the princess a message. As it is, I must wait for the end of her seclusion. 
Now I'm afraid I must hurry back to the castle. I'll try to return to the bookshop again later. Thank you for speaking with me, Jalo. I hope we meet again soon. Indeed. Well, at least someone here is friendly to us. Okay, to be fair, most people have been friendly to us here. This isn't quite Mordavi, okay? Well, so he doesn't trust the Wazir either. And he hasn't actually heard from Kasima either. Huh. All rather suspicious. Speaking of, uh, actually this is not related at all. We never actually looked at this book we got. And I figured we should do that. It was a free book, but you know, it might be a classic. Let's have a look at it. Alexander opens the bargain book and reads a paragraph at random. Two dulcimers raised to the degree of 40 half dulcimers, divided into equal parts by the third of a cackle of grouse geese, put over the result of 10 fine mackles, albeit small fine mackles, stretched over the total of 53 and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. What have I done? Mm. Phew, what an incredibly boring book. No wonder the bookshop owner wanted to get rid of it so badly. Take it back! Might I return this? Please, I had a hard enough time getting rid of that book in the first place. I'll actually give you money if you keep it. Alright, well in the next video we're going to go ahead and uh, talk to the uh, pawn shop owner about the magic map. And hopefully that'll pan out for us. Otherwise, we're stuck here on this island till we go old and gray. And isn't that lovely? <sighs> hopefully we can unravel some more of the mysteries of what's going on here in this uh, strange new land. Things just don't seem right here. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves, guys.